All right, there we go. And I'm resharing the screen. So Michelle, you can take it away. Great. Um, so thank you, Brian, for uh, reaching out. Um, my name is Michelle Jordan. I'm general counsel and district director for your Cook County Commissioner, my Cook County Commissioner, Larry Sufferton. Um, our office is on Green Bay Road in Evanston, but um, we are working remotely. And um, I have wonderful um, fellow staffers and every single one of us is here to help. And we'll, um, uh, as we um, start moving into the actual appeal process, when uh, the assessor opens up for appeals, we are here to help. Um, we are also here and um, very interested in helping you uh, with any kind of interaction with county government, um, birth certificates, death certificates, things like that. Um, we are in, in unprecedented times and um, sometimes uh, you know, you need to interact with county government and you may be um, struggling. We can help. That's why we're here. Uh, so we're going to cover a, a couple things. Um, uh, we're going to talk um, about uh, appealing your assessed valuation. Um, now, there are two ways that you can keep your property taxes um, to be the lowest that they can be. Um, the, the way to um, not pay more than your fair share is to make sure that you get all the exemptions to which you are entitled and to appeal. Now, you should appeal reflexively without thinking about it twice a year. There are two bodies that handle your appeals. Um, the first is the one that reassesses us all 1.8 million parcels in Cook County. Every three years we get reassessed. Um, the county is divided into batches by region, um, and uh, the Cook County Assessor does that. The Cook County Assessor also listens for and takes our appeals. Now, um, Brian has on the um, uh, screen in front of you, he has the Assessor site. Now, once the Assessor makes um, his decision um, and he certifies his results, you next have an opportunity to appeal that decision at the Board of Review. Um, the Cook County Board of Review, um, or, do you wanna put, oh, okay, Brian's gonna put that one up too, so you'll see that. Um, the Cook County Board of Review is acts as sort of a quasi appellate review of the assessor and um, his decisions. So we're expecting, I spoke with the commissioner today, and if everything goes as scheduled, um, we're expecting for uh, Niles Township to be open for appeals at the Board of Review sometime in the new year. Um, things have been dramatically altered. Um, there are a couple things that have altered meaningfully um, in the way of deadlines. We, you should know by now, um, hopefully you do, um, that the um, deadline for paying your second installment tax bill has been changed to October the 1st. Um, and that's because, you know, with the pandemic, there were so many things um, happening that that extra time um, is in there. Now, um, if for some reason you did not get an exemption that you are entitled to, I will urge you uh, to go to the Cook County Assessor's website. If we can, Brian, let's go back to there. Um, there do you see he has the drop down menu of all the exemptions? Take a look at those. Um, now, the other at the very end of the presentation, we're going to take a look at a tax bill so that you can see if you got your exemptions, okay? But if you did not get an exemption, you need to apply for it very soon because the assessor has given a deadline of September 11th to apply for those. You can apply for them online um, or you can print the forms off and mail them in. Either way, the reason why they have done that is if you are entitled to an exemption and they give you a certificate of error, which is a correction, and they give you that exemption, they send you a new bill. Um, and it's not like your normal bill, it's a little tab at the bottom of the letter that they send you, but it will have the lower amount, okay? And if for some reason you don't make the deadline, don't despair. If you are entitled to an exemption, you get it, okay? If you don't, if the deadline comes um, for October the 1st and you pay that second installment bill and you did not get an exemption that you're entitled to, you should apply for it anyway, and then they will process a refund. 
Refunds are, um, despite the pandemic, I'm told are going out in a timely fashion and they take between 30 and 60 days. So don't um, worry so much about that deadline. The deadline that we need to be mindful of is the appealing deadline. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're, um, we're expecting on the assessors, if you could, Brian, go to um, appeals and you'll see where it says appeals calendar and deadlines. Go on that one. So we're gonna see down there and the assessor um, has only said for Niles Township, end of September. That is um, a little further down there, a little further down. There, there we go, we're getting to N Niles Township. Um, there you are, late September. Okay, so um, that's not very specific, but what I want you to do is to keep in mind, um, periodically check and see if they have opened for appeals. Or you can go to my the website for the commissioner, I post that every day. When Niles Township opens for appeals, I'm gonna have it there, okay? And again, if you have any questions about any of this, we are here to help. Um, so what we're gonna do now is I have um, a constituent that um, has consented to be my guinea pig because um, we're gonna do her appeal tonight. Um, we're gonna do her research and you guys are gonna learn along with me. Um, I, Whatever. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is um, we are going to um, move on down to um, the first. There we go. We're going to go down and we're going to put in our address. Now, some people, some overachievers may have their PIN number already. We're going to pretend like you don't and we're going to search by address. So search by address and then we're going to put in the address. There we are. So you put that in. Now, I want to keep everyone mindful of this. Um, less is more when it comes to interfacing with the, the assessor's website. If you put north or south or the direction or the, I would not recommend that. Skip that and just put the, num the number of this house number and the street and the city. That's enough. That should be enough. Okay, and then we're going to hit search. So here's the cornerstone of the argument that we are making for our appeal. We are going to find out the price per square foot that we are paying. Um, and then we're gonna try, we're gonna search for properties using all of this publicly available information to find properties that are paying less per square foot. And then those are our persuasive arguments to take to the assessor and say, hey, Mr. Assessor, um, uh, I am not being uniformly um, assessed. And here are the PIN numbers that are paying less per square foot. Therefore, I should pay less per square foot. That's pretty much it. Um, the Board of Review is a little bit more sophisticated. You can use more equitable arguments. And I'm going to suggest that now um, you start thinking about those equitable arguments. And what I mean by that is um, arguments like, oh, uh, through no fault of my own, uh, new, through no fault of my own, a, um, uh, a shooting range opened up right next door to my house. And so now people are shooting all hours of the day, and that is interfering with my enjoyment of my property. Those kinds of things, things that have changed, traffic patterns, maybe a mall that was built up. Think about those things, because those are arguments that you can use in January, we're expecting, at the Board of Review. That is not an argument you can use at the assessor. We are limited only to the price per square foot argument. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find out the price per square foot of the subject property. And there are a couple things that you should know. Um, we're gonna see a lot of values here. We're gonna see um, total estimated market value. Do you see that? Do you see total assessed value? You see land value, and then you see building value. In order to calculate the price per square foot, we only want the value that contains the building. Okay, all the other um, land is tax flat, buildings are unique. So. When we look there, where Brian is highlighted, we see the amount, okay? And this particular property says that the Board of Review um, certified, that means it's the most recent number, um, as the building assessed value as 45,522, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide that number, okay, Brian, move on down, if you would, to the characteristics. So right, when you are searching, you write that number down. And remember, you only want the building assessed value. And then you're gonna divide it by the size. Do you see where it says building square footage? Way down there after age, building square footage. Do you see? Brian, could you highlight that one, that value right there? Perfect, right. So 
Then we divide the two numbers. And when you're doing this project, you're going to have your little handy dandy calculator right handy. Um, so have when you're sitting down to do your research, have your calculator. So we did the calculation. And when you divide um, 45, 522 by 3350, you get the magic number of 12.99. So that is our number to beat. We are going to set about finding properties that are paying less than 12.99 per square foot. Now, Brian, if you would go back to that page so we can look at the other ways that we're going to, there we go. So move up just a tad. We're going to look and see. I want you to see, um, Brian, is there any way to scooch it over so that the faces aren't covering up? The you can drag that on your screen. Oh, I can. Oh, let's try that. Yeah, and while she's doing that, um, we have created this spreadsheet that we can distribute to anyone that can help you automatically calculate these uh, values. So for this first example, the uh, building assessed value was 43,522, and the square footage is 3,350, and our little spreadsheet here just automatically does the calculation for you. And we also created it so that when we enter in other comparisons, you enter in the same information, it's gonna tell you if the value is higher or lower. And the lower values are the ones we want as evidence that our property is overvalued. So through uh, the presentation, we will fill this out as an example, and we can make this spreadsheet available to everybody in this meeting to use to just help make your evaluation really easy. Well, I am an old lady and um, I don't use spreadsheets all that often. And if you are like me and you're not, you feel a little bit uncomfortable um, with spreadsheets, paper and pen works just as good. That's true. That's right. Um, so, uh, all right. So now what we're going to do is there's, um, if you look on um, uh, the tax details of this particular property, you're going to see it is in neighborhood 103. And um, the classification is 2-78. So you're going to write that down because that information about your property um, is important when we do a search. Brian, could we go and show them the classification page so that people will know um, their classification? Yeah, let me pull that up. Yeah. Here it is. Perfect. All right. So. The other thing you should know is that when you look at your property on the assessor's site, all that information is there. But the reason why I want everyone to look here um, is sometimes the assessor gets it wrong. And if your property is not in the right classification, you need to get that fixed. Um, and there are uh, all kinds of ways to do that. And it's on the assessor's website. You can also call me and I'll, I'll help you with that. Um, because if you're uh, in the wrong classification, sometimes um, it means you're maybe you're being overassessed. So those are all the different classifications. Now let's go back now. We have our price per square foot and we know what our class is and we know what our neighborhood is. So now we just need to find properties that share all those characteristics. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use a search engine that the assessor has, uh, or that Cook County has for us, and it's called the Cook County Tax Portal. It's pretty cool. Um, now, I have the PIN, so we'll type the PIN in, but if you don't know your PIN, you can type in your house number. And remember, less is more. House number, city, street, leave it. Leave uh, do not bother with zip code, other things like that. But let's put the pin in. I'm, Brian, I'm going to shout it out to you. Are you ready? Yes. 1034 330 002 000. Now, one thing you should know is if you have four zeros in that last slot, that means you're in a single family home. If you have digits in that slot, you are a condo or something of that um, type. Okay, that's the only difference. All right, so let's do search and we're gonna um, start looking for properties. Now, there's a couple steps in here and I'm gonna say, um, I'll be controversial. I don't think this is the most user-friendly. Um, so 
if you are spending some time on this website and you end up clicking on a button you don't know where the heck you are, call me and I'll help, okay? Um, but we're going to, or you can go back and watch the video, okay? But I'm gonna, we're gonna go through the steps as slow as possible. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the cook viewer. Do you see that bright blue box? Okay, right, we're gonna click on that. Now, if you're not super computer savvy, there's gonna be some moving up and down um, with a toggle on the left-hand side. If you have problems with that, of course, call me, I'll help. All right, so there's the property. And what they have in the middle here is called a bone map. And that's just about elevations and all kinds of really cool geographic stuff um, that really isn't of any concern for our purposes today. But I would highly recommend that you spend some time and look at this stuff, it's sort of cool. If you're a government geek like me, it's you know pretty much fun afternoon all right so let's click on the property on the left because that's the one um, that's our subject property um, in this case if it were you this is going to be your property and you're going to click on it now it has all the information there that's really important it has the pin number it has the building value and then it has the building square footage okay it also has the the construction type okay I want you to note that when you look at your property, um, sometimes the assessor gets it wrong. He'll say that your property is a frame house. And if your house is made out of bricks, it's incorrectly listed. You can, again, um, they'll, you ask for a site visit and they will come out and correct that. But so you take a look at that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down below where it says age and it says compare this property to others. Okay, so we're gonna click on that. Here we go. Now, what we're doing is it's narrowing our search, okay? So there it's saying construction type, it's saying the age, it's saying all that information, and then we're gonna click on find comparable properties, okay? And there they are, there's four of them. So now we have four properties that share the same neighborhood, that have the same classification, um, that um, are all made out of masonry, uh, what we have to do now is find out what their price per square foot is. So Brian, let's go look at that first one. Looks like it's all on their block. So what we're gonna do is do you see on the left-hand side, remember what we're looking at. We want building value divided by the square footage of the building. And on that one, the building value is 46928. And then it said estimated building square footage 3336. You divide that up, and I think Brian's gonna switch us back to the spreadsheet, we'll take a look. And so for that one, look at that. They are paying a full two points higher than our subject property. So that is not a persuasive argument. <laughs> We're not gonna use that one. Um, but it's good to know, and if you actually knew your neighbor and you saw that they were crazy over assessed, you of course knock on the door and say, hey, maybe you should appeal your property taxes, call your commissioner. All right, so let's go on, go back to the search, there we go. And now we're gonna go back. This is a little tricky, so go all the way up to the top, Brian. And on the left, um, at the top of the, there we go, it says back. Do you see that very tiny thing? This is again, not so user-friendly, but you click back and it's gonna take us to the list. Okay, so we know number one's not so good for us. Um, let's go down to number two. All right, so this is again, it's on the same block, it looks like. Um, so their building value is 4-1. Does everybody see, nod with your heads because I can see some of you on screen. If you can see the building value, 41777, and then you divide it by the estimated building square footage, 3335, all right? And then we're gonna calculate. So if we weren't using his fancy schmancy um, spreadsheet, you and I would be doing it with our calculators and a piece of paper. And look at that, we found one, yay! And Brian, <laughs> put it in green. So we know when we file our appeal, we're gonna put that property down as um, uh, a property that's persuasive in our argument to have our assessed valuation reduced. All right, so let's go back to the list again because we had three others. Go all the way, there we go, we'll go to the back one. Now we're gonna go down to number three and it's the same thing, okay? We're gonna do building value divided by the building square footage and then we'll divide it. And our magic number, everybody remember 12.99. Your magic number will be different, <laughs> obviously, um, but remember you wanna find properties that are less than your magic number. Okay, so that one is higher, not by as bad as that other one, but it's still no good for us. So let's go back and calculate the last one on our list. There we go. 
So now we're gonna look at this one, same thing, okay? All right, so there we go. Um, and then we'll do the calculation. And what do we have for that one, Brian? It one. is higher. No good for us. So now, sometimes when you are searching for comps, you will get nothing. There will be a few people who will, when they search that, it, they will say there are no comps. There are other options. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you um, a way to search on the assessor's site. It, it's going to require more work on our part because we're going to have to actually look at the properties. But if for some reason you cannot use the tax portal, this is the way that you will find your comps. All right, so we're going to go to the Cook County Assessor. Um, <clears throat> for people who also just want to look at every single property in their neighborhood and class and just like to know all of the information, you can do this too. Even if you don't, even if the shortcut works for you at the portal, you can do this too. So let's move on down to um, scroll down just a little bit more. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in the address. Okay, now what we're going to do is cur move the cursor down and do you see where it says search? by neighborhood. Okay, so you put in the township. There we are. And our neighborhood is 103. Yours will be different or could be the same if you're a neighbor of this property. Um, and then your class, this one, the property, our subject property is 278. Okay, now we're going to hit search and we're going to find a whole lot. Now, because we're not using a search engine, we're gonna to have to look at the construction, okay? So that's one thing that, let's pull up the first one and we'll take a look at that one. We know that the house, our subject property is masonry. So this one clearly is masonry. Um, let's move down to where it says now, uh, yeah, to the type of construction, um, the characteristics. So if let's say your house is frame and it says here exterior construction masonry, you need to um, have a site visit and have the assessor come out and correct that. Um, any any um, uh, of the fields that are on the assessor site, if they are not accurate, it is in your best interest to make sure that they are accurate. Um, and the assessor has made that rather easy to do, um, to make those corrections. Okay, so let's go back to our um, big, okay, there we are. So this is the one, um, and we know on this one, um, it's a good, uh, Construction is the same, the neighborhood is the same, the class is the same, and it doesn't, it's not, was not one that was captured by the portal. So let's do the calculation on that one. Yeah, there, Sorry, I way. went to the wrong screen, but um, we pre-did the calculation on that one, and it is also higher. Okay, let's go back to that massive list though, um, so we can take a look at that. Chances are for you, um, if you do a search this way, um, Brian, if you can arrow down so that people can see how many pages there are. Okay, do you see there's three pages on here? And in Niles Township, that's not unusual because a lot of the properties are very similar. Um, if we were to go, let's go to page three and just take a look. Let's see if we can find one. Let's look at the uh, Kilbourne Avenue, 6429. Let's see if we can find one that may have a different construction. Any of those is fine. We'll take a look. So let's look at that one and see if the construction says masonry. Um, we'll look at, right, characteristics. And that one says masonry. Um, it, the reason why you cannot compare a frame house to a masonry house is because masonry houses are going to be that more valuable. Frame houses are considered by the assessor to be less valuable. The other option in there is um, there'll be a mixture of masonry and frame or there'll be stucco. But when you are searching for comps, you need to make sure that you're making an apples to apples comparison by using the, the same exterior construction. Okay. Um, all right. So now we have found our um, comps. Um, the next thing we will do is you have the option to file your appeal online. When the assessor opens, let's go back to the main assessor site. When they open for appeals uh, for Niles Township, they're going to have a hot link um, 
to Niles Township. It says townships are open for appeals in very small letters. I, I'm not very happy about that because I have old eyes. Um, right above, do you see? Right, exactly. Thank you, Brian. Um, it says townships open for appeals. Now, when Niles Township is open, when you click on that, it's going to take you right to appeal. Okay, and you can file your appeal online. Now, if you do not feel um, like you're um, comfortable filing online because maybe, because you're gonna have to set up a password and then you're gonna have to um, uh, go through some fields. If you don't feel comfortable, if that is not in your wheelhouse of filing um, an online appeal, don't worry. You can print off the appeal form. If you would, Brian, go to appeals and I'll show you the appeal form. Um, we're gonna go, uh, let's see, um, residential appeals. Great, perfect. Um, and then we're gonna go to, let's um, move down, how to file an appeal. All right, so it says, of course, file online, which is what they would prefer that you do. Um, or if you want to get, there's a PDF. Um, I think further down, there should be a PDF. Um, zip, 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 zip. Yeah, they're hiding this really well. PDF yeah. forms PDF at the bottom form. here. Yes. I would say that was hiding the ball there. So if you don't feel comfortable, um, I have it on very good authority from the assessor's office that there is no penalty for filing on paper. In fact, um, last spring, I filed almost every single one of the appeals that I um, helped constituents with on paper. So there's no shame, and you should feel no shame in using a paper appeal form. If you are very comfortable filing online, do that, okay? The one thing I want you to be very mindful of is that the one deadline that is hard and fast and they will reject your appeal if you do not file it uh, by the end of the filing period, okay? And they will have on their website, and I'll have it posted on ours, when the deadline to appeal is, okay? Um, I can't say what it is right now because they haven't opened and their website just says end of September, but usually it's about 30 days, okay? Don't miss that deadline, okay? Um, that's the one hard and fast deadline. Now, um, before we take questions, what I'd like to do now um, that we've covered the appeal and how to make sure you get that appeal in, um, we're going to take a look at your tax bill and we're going to make sure that your exemptions are correct. So what I'd like you to do now, Brian, is let's go, um, there we go, read, read my mind, beautiful. Okay, so the little purple box in the middle is the one we're going to use. And click on the purple one, Brian, and I'm going to shout out the pin of the subject. Here we go. So it's 10, 3, 4, 3, 3, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. Beautiful. So now, um, what we're gonna, there's a lot of really good information on here. I'm going to say another thing about Maria Pappas. Maria Pappas is an overachiever, and I love her for that. Um, she posts her bills at least 10 to 15, sometimes 30 days before they go out in the mail. Um, now, there, as we know, we have two bills. We have the first installment and the second installment. Um, the second installment bill is where all the action happens. That's where we're going to see the exemptions that come off. It's also where we're going to see, if we are successful in our appeal, where we're going to see the reduction. The first installment bill is just pro forma. Um, so well, let's move down, um, all the way down um, to where it says, keep going. So it says you can download your tax bill. You can download that and look at it. But let's go down and it says, have you received your exemptions in these tax years? This is where everybody, I want everyone to do this tonight if they can. I want you to look and see if you got the exemption that you're entitled to. Some folks who had been getting a senior exemption, had applied for a senior exemption a long time ago, and have been getting it clockwork, no problems, they fell off. Or if they were not getting, what I see a lot with people in condos in particular, is people who um, uh, are not even getting their homeowner exemption. Now, if you aren't getting an exemption to which you are entitled, they will go back up to three years um, and will cut you a check, all right? But what we want to make sure, insofar as the second installment bill, which is, like I said, remember, you don't have to pay that until October the 1st. Now, if you find that you did not get an exemption, I want you to apply for that exemption post haste because um, ideally, if they can process your certificate of error and give you that exemption, 
then you'll pay the lower amount and they won't have to refund you for this year. Now, if you were entitled to an exemption and you didn't get your homeowner exemption, let's say in 2018 or 2017 or 2016, there are forms on the assessor's site for you to apply for those and then they will process that and send you a check. Because if you are entitled to an exemption, you get it, okay? You need to make sure that you get it, all right? And all the forms and all the criteria is spelled out pretty clearly on the assessor site, um, the Cook County assessor site where we spent a lot of time today. Um, but one other thing I want you to look at too, you can, um, let's go up just a tad, Brian, if you can, let's take a look at that um, sample of a second installment bill. Do you see where it says tax year 2019 second installment due Monday, August 3rd? That's what it would have been under normal circumstances, but the Cook County Board gave us until October the, the 1st. Go ahead, let's look at it. Um, click on that one and we're going to, and then do you see it at the bottom? We're going to take a look at that bill. There we are. Okay, now there's lots of really cool stuff on this second installment bill. Let's move all the way down. It also tells you about all the taxing bodies. Now you know where your dollars go. Um, you're going to see everybody who has levied and is part of where your tax dollars are going. I mean, there's some pretty important things in there, and it's, I think it's powerful information for us to look at. But let's move on down, a little bit further down, Brian, and we're going to see the tax calculator. Now looky there on the left-hand side. So this subject proper uh, property gets a homeowner's exemption um, and uh, let's see, a disabled person's exemption. Um, so do you see how those were reduced off of their tax obligation, okay? Because those exemptions are um, uh, set out for if you qualify for them to reduce your property taxes. If you are a veteran, a disabled veteran, there's a disabled veterans exemption. There's all kinds of, um, you should take a look. Um, there's the senior freeze exemption, which is has an income requirement. You have to make under 65,000 and you have to be, um, you have to be 65 in the year that you apply. Okay, so remember we pay our property taxes a year in arrears. Um, that's a legacy that we got from the depression way back when. Um, so we always, right now, what we're doing is we are um, uh, paying our 2019 property taxes, okay? And when we do this appeal, we're appealing our 2020s, okay? So um, I am um, uh, ready for questions, actually, Brian. Are there any? There have been a few. Okay. Um, one was just asking your phone number again, and I will post that in the chat. Okay. Um, and actually, that's um, people can feel free to use the chat. I'm just going to put uh, her phone number in one more time. Just give me a second to do that. Okay. Let's um, go back to the assessor site real quick, too, while we're waiting. Um, so we can... Uh, the main site for the assessor. Perfect. All right. Um, so uh, the drop down menus, remember we talked about exemptions, right, at the top? Exemptions, appeals, it's very small, but those are very important, right? Um, and then the search engines that, that we talked about. All right, I'm ready for questions. So she's speaking, but we can't. Oh, yeah, you're muted. Do you want to? <laughs> uh oh, still can't hear. One second. Okay, I guess I'm, I'm muted. Oh, there now. you are. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm delighted to hear all those informations. I have one question here. What's the difference between, between senior citizen exemption and senior freeze exemption? Okay, let me read to you the exact definitions that the assessor has. Okay, so remember this is in the drop down menu, and I'm going to read you the senior exemption. Okay, um, what is the senior exemption? Uh, let's see. Um, so you must be 65 years of age or older during the tax year that you're applying. 
okay? You must either own the property or have a lease or contract which makes you responsible for the taxes. Um, and the property must be your principal residence, okay? Remember, all these delightful exemptions are for your primary residence. If you have rental properties, mm -mm, no exemptions for those guys. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, uh, the property must be your principal residence. Now, the freeze, let me go to that one, and I'll read you that, those criteria. Um, all right, so it has an income component, all right? Um, you must be 65 years uh, of age or older in 2019. You have to have a total gross household income of no more than 65,000 for 2018. You have to own the property. You have to be liable for the taxes and it has to be a principal residence. Now, let me tell you something really cool about the senior freeze. When you apply for it, it's gonna freeze your assessed valuation. So over time, it gets more valuable, all right? so. Um, if you qualify for this senior freeze, and let's say you qualified for it in 2016, or you qualified in 2017, you need to go back and get that exemption because it is a really valuable exemption. And like I said, if you are entitled to the exemption, the assessor wants to make sure you get your exemption and the com commissioner suffered and really wants to make sure you get your exemptions. That's why he spends so much of our time making sure that people get the exemptions that they qualify for. Um, and we can help navigate if you're, if you're struggling in, in getting those exemptions. But like I said, they will go back up to three years. Did that answer yeah, your question? Three years. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Now, um, sometimes, um, uh, if, if let's say um, you uh, have a condominium and um, you just bought it and the person before you did not have a homeowner's exemption, sometimes that exemption falls off. Everybody is entitled to a homeowner exemption on their primary residence. That's a really, it's a good exemption. It's you know probably the least valuable, but it's very valuable and everybody is entitled to it. And so you should, it is in your best interest to make sure that you appear, apply for that um, homeowner exemption. And if you know young people, I see this a lot you know, with young condo owners um, who've lived in the property for a while and they never got that exemption. Go back, make sure you get it because when you're first starting out, these things can make all the difference. Okay, so we've had a couple more questions in. I'm actually going to take them out of order. Um, okay. One of the questions, could an appeal ever result in an increased assessed value? And I believe the answer to that is no, correct? Categorically no. Um, there is literally no downside to filing an appeal. Um, the other thing that question that I get asked a lot is not, not only can your, um, will your assessment not go up, when you use those comparable properties, you cannot negatively impact those properties. So don't, you know, lots of people I know have said, oh, what if I use my neighbor because they're paying less and, and I, it results in their assessment going up? It will not. Um, it is used as evidence to support your appeal and nothing more. Each property, like I said, in the triennial, when you get to that reassessment phase, every single property is going to get reassessed, right? But when you appeal, you are not going to get reassessed. You can only go down, all right? Now, if you are um, aware of your neighbor and the, when you're searching because they're like your property and they're overassessed, let them know. I mean, there's, it, it's a nice it's a mitzvah. You can help them appeal, um, tell them to appeal and, and make sure that they do because nobody should pay more um, than their fair share of property taxes. And like I said, when you use comparable properties, you cannot negatively impact the properties that you are using in support of your argument. Do you have another one, Brian? All right, yeah, there are a few more questions. Um, one of which is, when Niles Township opens for appeals in September, it will be for 2020, or what year will it be for? Um, so, let's, let me go to their site, um, and we'll go appeals. Can you just show me? Uh, so we're gonna do, let's go to the assessor site and um, let's do online appeal. So uh, I guess they don't say that there, but yes, we will be appealing our um, 2020 assessed valuation. Okay? There we okay, go. scrolling through more of the questions. And there, do you see it says property soundship is open for appeals? Do you see there's a hot link there? And that takes us to the calendar too. Okay. 
the online appeal portal there. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Another question, is the appeal process different for income property compared to primary residences? No, um, you can use the same search engines and everything for your rental properties. Um, the only difference is, remember I talked about the two pots. One is exemptions and rental properties get no exemptions, okay? Your primary residence, you get exemptions for those. But the appeal <laughs> process for rental property is exactly the same, exactly the same. Okay, another question. Is each exemption an application or do you list each on one form? So I think the question is, are all of the exemptions on one form or are there multiple forms for each exemption? No, there are multiple forms, but you'll see that when you apply for the senior freeze exemption, the senior exemptions hitchhikes along. Um, if you are, now one bit of good news is in the past you had to, um, renew your senior exemption, which was sort of anti-intellectual if you think about it, because if we're alive, we're one year older. Um, but in Springfield, they got wise to that and they decided to make that change. So now your senior exemption should renew automatically, okay? Um, the one thing that does not renew automatically is the senior freeze because you have to declare your swear on your income. Um, and that they will send those renewals out under normal circumstances, <laughs> let's hope we get to something resembling normal. Um, under normal circumstances, those re, um, renewal forms, we talked a little bit about the LTO earlier. If you're entitled to an LTO, if you're entitled to the senior freeze exemption, if you have gotten those in the past, they will send you that renewal um, in the week between Christmas and New Year's. So that's when they normally go out. And what you'll get from the assessor is you'll get, it has a picture of your house and it'll um, have all your pin number and all of that in there. And then on the back side, if you have the senior freeze, you'll fill in your income and you'll sign it and you'll send it back. Now, if you are wise, you will fill that out immediately and send it back. I have so many of my seniors um, in the, in the past, before they got lectured to death by me, um, would put that in the mail pile and think about it later because they thought, oh, I don't have to pay that second installment bill until March. No, when you get that, your renewal um, for your senior freeze exemption or your other, um, if you have a disabled person exemption, when you get that renewal, fill it out and send it back immediately because you want to make sure that it's in there and, um, and all lined up with the lovely dollars coming off on your second installment bill. Now, let's say that you do everything you're supposed to do. You get that renewal. It comes, you fill it out, just like I lectured you to, and um, you send it back. And now it's um, Maria Pappas being the overachiever that she is. God love her. Um, post the bills online. Let's say, um, when does she do that? It's usually a month before she mails them out. Um, so, um, May, June, July, let's see. Yeah. June. Sometimes she posts them in June or July. Um, you can look at them online and if that exemption is not there, you need to, to contact the assessor and say, Hey, I sent this back. Always keep copies. And you'll say to Mr. Assessor, look, I sent this back. Here's a copy of it. Um, you need to send me a new bill. Okay. And they will all things, you know, being normal. Now, we are in the middle of a pandemic, and obviously our deadline to play, pay for that second installment bill um, is not March, it is now October, right? But if you are entitled to an exemption, you need to get that exemption, apply for that exemption, and then they will send it out so that you, if you get that in time, you can pay the lower amount, okay? Um, if you don't, don't make sure you please make sure that you pay your property tax bill on time before that October bill, um, that October deadline, and then apply for the exemption and then they will process a refund. Okay. All right. Another question. Mm -hmm. What about if your property is identical to another yet they are in a lower <laughs> classification? For example, maybe 2 yeah. 03 versus 2 04. Yeah. So um, the only thing that you can control 
is your property. If your property has been misclassified, thank you, Brian. Gosh, you read my mind. Um, if your property has been misclassified, you need to get that corrected. If you think your neighbor is misclassified, um, you could think on them and contact the assessor and say, hey, I think my, pro my neighbor's property is, is uh, incorrectly assessed uh, or inc incorrectly classified. That's not any of your concern. <laughs> um, you want to make sure that you are um, paying the lower amount. Now, if you um, love your neighbor and you see that maybe they are um, wrongly classified, they might be wrongly classified, there might be information that you're not aware of, but if you think they're wrongly classified, and let them know, and maybe they can get the correct, the error corrected at the assessor. We don't want anyone to pay any um, penny more than their fair share. Now, lots of people like to look around and they'll say, oh, these properties are identical. Properties are not identical. Um, they uh, will have similarities, as we know, there are as the neighborhood similarity and there's the classification similarity. But as we know, um, some two condos that could be, uh, built at the exact same time are not going to be the same. Um, they may have more of the common areas, or let's say that we have a developer that built literally two houses that are identical. Um, let's say that um, two houses right side by side are both 2-78 like our subject property. But guess what? House number two, they won the lotto and they put, um, uh, let's see, they uh, got a permit and they added on a three-story addition. Obviously, um, they're probably going to change classification, but if they don't change classification, they are inherently more valuable. Okay, um, that information will be captured because when they add on to their house, they're identical at one point, but when they add on that three story addition, they're going to have their builder is going to pull permits. And the assessor monitors two things to look in addition to a few others, but um, two hard and fast things. Uh, when they are reassessing our properties in that reassessment phase, they look at sales, because that's the market speaking loud and clear, um, and they look at permits, okay? And if those permits, I'm told that you know, there's a short holiday when you build something before the permits catch up with the assessor, but you have to know that if you're going to add on um, a three-story addition, you're going to pay more property taxes. Um, you've got more square footage, uh, and it's just the way it is, and those properties will stop being identical. Um, they will stop being identical in a number of ways. Now, the other question that I get all the time is, um, well, I know these houses are identical, but they have four bathrooms and I have three. Well, the assessor is never going to come inside your house and look at how many bathrooms you are. And the assessor is not going to look and see how beautiful your kitchen is. The, the assessor may have an indication that you have a beautiful kitchen. If, you, if your builder pulls a permit and puts, you know, uh, gold-plated fixtures, okay? That information will be captured in a public document that the assessor will then use to assess your property higher, okay? Um, there, there's really only two ways um, that the assessor is going to know what's going on is by sales in the neighborhood, which is an indicator of whether, you know, what the value um, of your property is, and those permits, okay? So some folks like to make their appeal, they'll write, uh, write their appeal to the um, Board of Review and they'll say, oh, Mr. Board of Review, my house is a dump. The, the roof has not been replaced. The assessor or the Board of Review, they just don't care. Um, I care, I'm sorry if, you're, <laughs> if your roof is leaking and everything, but it's not gonna impact um, your assessed valuation now. If your house is uninhabitable because the roof fell in and you can't live in your house, then you need to let the assessor know and your property taxes will be altered in accordance with that. Okay, Brian, you got another question? Oh, for? yes. So that kind of answers one of the questions. Can a number of bathrooms be used for comparisons? No. Yeah. Um, and then another question, and I'm just trying to do these in order. Um, I think there's a little confusion. Uh, the Board of Review versus the assessor's office. Okay. Now, um, like I said, um, the assessor's job is to reassess all the properties and then they allow us to appeal his decision, um, which is what we're doing with you. Um, that's what's coming up soon is the assessor's round of appeals. Remember I told you every year you get two bites at the apple, two opportunities to appeal your assessed valuation. Um, after the assessor makes his decision, 
um, and uh, they certify those decisions, then what we have is a quasi appellate review done by the Cook County Board of Review. And, um, you know, last time with Brian, uh, I came and helped people file their appeals at the Board of Review. The Board of Review takes into consideration the arguments that we learned how to do, which is the price per square foot, but because they act as sort of an equitable um, uh, arbiter, you can do equitable arguments. And I mentioned those before, but they are worth mentioning again. Um, if across the street they built a new mall um, and now you have trucks and cars coming, driving, whizzing past your house night and day, that impacts the value of your property. That is an argument rightly made to the Board of Review. The assessor listens to one type of argument. I mean, he can, you can write and say, Mr. Assessor, my roof fell in. That's one argument. But the more standard appeal is the price per square foot argument that we learned how to do today. Okay, a couple more, couple more questions. Um, specifically, how do sales affect the valuations? And how can we assess sales and their effect on our properties? Okay, so there's two things. Um, so uh, when properties um, get mortgaged, there's almost always... Um, uh, they do, um, uh, what's it called? A, um, uh, an, an analysis for the, um, the fair market analysis by, a, um, a certified, um, uh, what do you call it? Real estate of value. I, I forget the term. Um, that's as part of your closing documents. Okay. If you just bought your property and you have one of those, um, uh, analysis, uh, for your mortgage company, um, those are usually, they have a limited shelf life because what they're saying is, this is what we think the market um, is right now. So the market changes. Usually I think their, their shelf life is you know, less than a year. So don't go out and get uh, an appraisal. That's what it is, a certified appraisal. Don't go out and get um, an appraisal just because you think that it's going to result in a lower um, property tax assessment because they, they're expensive. And if, you know, if it's dramatic, maybe, but in the normal circumstances, it wouldn't be necessary because you could never recoup the cost of hiring an appraiser to, you know, appraise your property. Now, um, when the properties um, are selling, let's say that you have a couple on your street and they sell, um, that information is um, captured by um, uh, all of the closing uh, figures and everything are captured by the assessor and they do what is called a regressive analysis. So they're looking to see um, how, whether the sales are going up or whether the sales are going down. Now, many of you may remember um, way back in 2008 when we had that horrible economic downturn. Well, the assessor was watching and saw that the properties that were selling were going down. And so what happened is that was res resulted in lower um, property tax assessments. Because if the value has gone down, the assessment should go down, okay? Um, you can you just you know, be nosy and watch what's going on on your block, but the more efficient and thorough method is the method that we showed you today. Um, you don't have to go out and, and look at the MLS or any of that, that's not, very efficient use of your time. The way that Brian showed you, um, uh, where we went step by step, that's the information that the person who's making the decision will be using, okay? Now, let's go back to those uh, the appraisal. If you have an appraisal done because you did a refi or something like that, and it came in lower than what the assessor says that your assessed valuation is, that's really good evidence, and you can use that for both. You can use it for the assessor and you can use it for the board of review. Okay. But keep in mind um, that it has a limited shelf life. If you have one from three years ago, it's pretty much not good. Okay. Okay. So I must have misread a question. Okay. Um, so I'm just, I'm going to read this verbatim. Okay. Can I use for comparisons the bigger houses if they pay less taxes than what I'm assuming is a smaller house that the question right. is referring to. Okay, um, we have to craft an apples to apples argument. 
okay? If you have a property um, that is, it's a huge house, it's got, it's in the same neighborhood, doesn't have the same class, obviously, um, but they're paying less per square foot, it's not gonna be persuasive from their perspective. Because um, my understanding is, uh, it's, this is, the property tax system is a little bit regressive. Um, it's not progressive, so, um, uh, let's say you have a giant, giant, giant mansion. I mean, it's right next door in a neighborhood of little tiny houses. Um, if you get got down to brass tax, they probably are paying, going to pay less per square foot for their giant, giant mansion. Um, the more likely situation is um, if you were to find, for some reason, a, a property that was crazy underassessed. Let's say it has the same neighborhood; it doesn't have the same classification. Um, it's not going to be persuasive to them because it's not um, my understanding is when they have an appeal in front of them uh, is this is more so for the board of review, but um, it could also be for the assessor. Uh, they pull up the pin number and then they pull up all the pin numbers that are within certain digits. If you're an outlier, they're going to cap capture that. If you have um, a property um, that's just way under assess, there could be unusual circumstances. It could be that there is nothing on the inside of that house. Um, you know, there could be any number of explanations that a fire happened inside that house and it's uninhabitable. Um, the, if you want a persuasive argument, stick with the neighborhood and, cl and your, your classification. That should provide you enough information. And again, if you want to use that crazy weird house, there's not like they're going to throw a penalty. Um, on the field, <laughs> go for it, throw it in. Um, but what I don't want you to do is to pin all your hopes on an argument that's not uh, normally, under normal circumstances, successful. Okay, another question. Um, mm -hmm. And this person might potentially need to reach out to you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, what's the best way to access, assess uh, comparable properties if your property sits on two pins? Great. That is, um, so uh, that's uh, very common for Niles Township. What they did was um, uh, when they developed it, uh, in many cases, you'll have a house that has two PIN numbers, okay? And when you search it, it's going to say consolidated values, all right? Um, so in the circumstances, um, if you could, Brian, go back to the list uh, from the portal. And that's where you're going to really see consolidated values. Now, I'm sorry, so, from the assessor or the board? The portal. Let's go to the portal list. Do you still have that up at the tab at the top from our subject? While you do that, I'll explain sort of what happens. So um, if you have a property that has two pins, normally, I think the average uh, house in um, uh, Niles Township that has two pins, what they've done is they've driven a, a right down the middle and they've split the pin in two. Sometimes um, what they'll do is they'll have the garage be one pin number and the house be one pin number. But it'll say right here, um, it'll say consolidated value. So it'll, you'll see where it says total value. Um, Brian, can you hover around there? If you have a consolidated value property, it'll say consolidated there, all right? So all you have to do is to do the math the same way, only um, what you do is just multiply it by two, okay? Now, and if you have that problem, you have a consolidated value and you're struggling, just call me, I can help, okay? It's, it's very common for Niles Township and it's not gonna um, inhibit you in any way from having a, a, an appeal or a successful appeal, which is what we all want, right? Okay. Um, and if you, like, if you hit the, the um, Brian, go down to where it had all the list of the, the four comps. Sometimes what you'll find, even if you don't have a consolidated value for your property, yeah, perfect. Um, sometimes the comp that they pull up when you use this search engine will say, it'll say consolidated values. And it's gonna usually become really obvious to you because the number, the, the building assessed um, value is gonna be crazy low. It's gonna be about half what you would expect. So that just tells you that you need to multiply it times two and then divide it by the, the building square footage. Okay, that's how you do consolidated um, value appeals. And they're not any less successful, so don't, you know, if you've got two pins, no worries. I have two pins, no shame. <laughs> okay, I believe that's all the questions in the chat. Are okay. there any more questions? Okay, so 
Um, Brian, thank you so much for hosting me. Um, it was delightful. I love that you can read my mind. That's delightful. Uh, what I want everyone to do is um, to spend some time tooling around on these websites. There's no harm that you can do to anything. <laughs> They're all protected. Look around. This is all information um, that you should have and that you should feel comfortable with. And if there's anything that you, if you're struggling to find something on the website or if there's something that confuses you, call me. This is what I'm here for. Um, and it's my pleasure to help. Uh, and you, ha you have my phone number and you have my email. Okay. All right, so thanks everyone. Um, again, if uh, you need any more of this information, you can reach out to Michelle or um, the library. We can uh, give you the website or anything. Um, if you don't have a computer at home and do want to do the application um, online, the library is open for limited computer use. You can be in the building for an hour. And I'm just going to mute eh? a couple people. Um, so you can come in and do, whether it's filling out an exemption or doing your entire appeal, the library is open for computer use and uh, we can help you get started with this process. And um, You can print off too, right? Brian, you guys can, yes. can form up. Yeah. So if you don't feel comfortable filing online, he'll. If you go into the library, they'll print off that appeal form, and you can just snail mail it. Snail mail it's delightful. I love the United States Postal Service. <laughs> we could pull up oh, the. Oh, that's exactly right. Perfect. We Brian, we, we could pull mind. up the that's appeal gonna... form and yeah, print it off for you, and you could start to fill it out. Perfect. Let me show you really quickly um, on this one what we want to fill out um, on this appeal form. So obviously your name and your address. Now you're going to, when you click the box, you're going to click current appeal only this in the second box after you do that. Right. Um, and then you're going to put, you know, um, you're, you're the owner. Perfect. Now, if you, the property, you just say same there right? You make sure you put your township there. You're going to put your comps right there that we found. Remember how we found only one, but that was a good one. One's good. Um, and then you click the box lack of uniformity. Okay. Now the most important thing when you do paper guys is you got to sign it. You got to sign it where it says signature of taxpayer. Can you see the hover on that one, Brian? Cause it's such a, a crummy place where they look. It's really sort of hidden in my humble opinion, right up a little um, higher, right? A little higher. Not the attorney. Right there. It says signature of taxpayer, guys. That's where you're going to sign. And they and, actually, um, I'm going to interrupt for just a yeah. quick second here. Um, they, a lot of these, like if you're looking at this form, you can click these items and just fill them out quick. But they have not enabled that feature for signature of taxpayer or attorney slash representative. So you might have to print this off. Yes. after having filled out the rest. They're expecting a real signature, not just like typing your name. Right, if you file online, you will use an electronic signature. But if you're gonna use paper, that's, you gotta make sure you sign it. The other thing that I wanna um, remind too, if we can go up just a little bit up um, to the top, higher up, there we go. Um, you wanna make sure that you put your PIN number there on the right hand side, there, exactly. And if you have two PIN numbers, remember we talked about people with consolidated, and yeah, you put your PIN number there. Um, and then you list your comps. Now, if you don't find any comps, guys, and you want to appeal anyway, do it. You know, leave that part blank. And if they find any, um, you know, like I said, when they have your appeal in front of them, if they find some, they will still grant you your appeal. Okay. So, you know, you don't, you don't have to put comps, but you should, and, and um, it certainly is more persuasive. Um, let's see, about this form. Yeah, uh, so um, if you're gonna file online, they're, they're going to, um, you'll, it'll all be electronic. This is the paper form. And like I said, there is no penalty for paper, guys. If you don't feel comfortable with the computer, um, you're pretty smart to get where you are right now on Zoom. <laughs> but if you, if you prefer paper, you can do it. <laughs> That's right. So thanks everybody for coming tonight. Um, we, we will just kind of hang out as um, people leave, but um, we want to thank everybody. And, uh, you know, whether through 
uh, Michelle or the library, we're happy to help you out more.